Merry Christmas, Bowtie Nation. Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another Monday market update. This week on Tuesday, because of the market closure last week, 9 a.m. every week, though, giving you an update on the market, stocks to watch, economic news to follow. And it seems Santa has come early this week with a stock rally. Stocks in the S&P 500 up more than 23% for the year. Now, last week, I asked citizens of the Bowtie Nation their outlook for 2024, and their responses were less than jolly. While 52% thought the S&P 500 would be up 5 to 10% next year, it is less than half this year's gain. And 36% thought that stocks would finish less than 5% higher, with 18% expecting losses. But what about Wall Street? I'm going to share Wall Street analysts' expectations for this year's stock market, as well as where to invest in this week's main topic. But first, you know, all this is going to be pointless if you don't start with an investing plan right for you. That's why I created this quick three-step guide to making your investing plan within five minutes you're going to be able to create an investing plan that makes your goals the motivation to keep investing and that is customized to your needs. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. It's totally free, just something I wanted to do for all you out there in the community. So click through and get your step-by-step -step guide now. I've seen too many investors miss out on the opportunity to make their money work for them, and it's because they didn't have a plan that fit their needs. So look for that link and get your free customized plan. Back to our main topic though, and stocks in the Dow continue to make new all-time highs, and it looks like that broader S&P 500 is gonna get there soon. A new bull market could bring the trillions of dollars sitting in money market accounts back into stocks and make 2024 a very good one for investors. I decided to look at where Wall Street sees 2024 stock markets and what stocks it's buying. Now first, to understand here, whenever you're talking about analyst estimates, you also need to think about the prevailing narratives, the storylines, the assumptions that they're using, then combine it with your own insights to come to your own conclusion. Nobody has a crystal ball, folks, but it's a great starting point to where you see the market and how to invest. We're going to start here with the overall 2024 stock market predictions, and then drill down into the sector expectations and, and then into Wall Street's favorite stocks to buy. Now, right now, analysts are estimating the companies in the S&P 500 are going to report 11% earnings growth next year, here producing $245 in earnings per share. So that would be across all the companies in that S&P 500 index, $245 per share aggregate across that the versus just over $220 a share this year. Now remember, earnings per share or net income there, that's the core measure of your return on a stock. As an investor, you own the right to that future cash flow from those earnings. So we are always looking to earnings growth first to see where the stock or the market is going. Now that 11% earnings growth next year would be a huge sigh of relief from relatively flat earnings this year and come on the assumptions that we see no recession, stable jobs, and and really falling interest rates, kind of a Goldilocks scenario. Now, if we're looking at the overall expensiveness of stocks right now, we can see the S&P 500 trades at about 23 times the earnings reported over the last 12 months. That's the price to earnings ratio. So the price of all the stocks in the S&P 500, that index, divided by their earnings is at 23 times for over the past 12 months. Now that's above both the five-year average, which is about 22 times, and then the 10-year average, also about 21 times PE. That's on the expensive side, but if we do get that 11% earnings growth in 2024 that is expected, then the current price of 47.60 for stocks on the index is just 19.4 times the earnings. So then if we do see some of those positive catalysts that we expect, like declining interest rates, resilient jobs, and consumer spending, and an overall healthier economy, then that's a very good shot that it returns, even on stocks that are a little pricey right now. And one more overall market chart here, and we'll narrow this down to the best stock sectors, but here we see the 2024 year in stock market forecasts from the major banks. With the S&P 500 already at about 4760, 4770, these targets actually look very similar to what you out there in the Bowtie Nation told me in that survey last week. Oppenheimer and Fundstrat are the most bullish here, estimating the stock market is going to close about 9% higher to 5200 by year end. The median here, so the forecast right in the middle, it's a nice even 5,000 by Bank of America, which would be a 5% return. The most pessimistic remains JP Morgan at 4,200. That would be a drop of nearly 12% over the year. A JP Morgan CIO and chief US equity strategist, Mike Wilson, has been one of the biggest bears on stocks over the past year, calling for a big sell-off this year that never really happened. So he's really sticking to that pessimism. But unless you're just investing in a broad indexed fund, you want to drill down in the stock sectors to focus your investing where you think the economy may grow the most. We see in 2024 sector earnings growth estimates here that analysts think healthcare is going to post the highest earnings growth at 17.8% year over year. 
Now, that's interesting in itself because healthcare isn't typically a growth sector. And we do see in a chart of industry returns here that the healthcare sector this year has gotten absolutely crushed, overall down 3% against a market that was up more than 20% on the year. The healthcare services industry is down 17% for the year as hospitals really suffer under inflation and a wage spiral. So it appears analysts see all of this turning around in 2024 for some strong earnings growth. So I think that's a great opportunity as healthcare spending just continues to increase. And you've got some very stable names here in drug stocks as well as services. I'm investing heavily into healthcare REITs as well as medical devices in 2024. We also see that analysts expect above market earnings growth from stocks in the communication services, technology, and consumer discretionary sectors. Now, these would require that Goldilocks scenario of rate cuts and strong consumer spending with no recession. On the other side of the chart here, analysts expect three sectors, materials, real estate, and energy to post earnings growth under 5% for the year, so very much under the stock market average. Now, while profits may still struggle for real estate, stocks, especially those office REITs, this sector has crashed and I think is in for a stronger upside this year. Lower interest rates are going to bring in those private equity and institutional investors back into property investing and support those valuations. So I still like real estate investment trusts here. So that earnings growth is something you always want to watch for in a sector or in an individual stock, but you also have to balance that off against valuations, whether those stocks or sectors are already expensive, already pricing in that earnings growth. Here we see stocks in eight of the 11 sectors are trading at price to earnings ratios higher than their long-term 10-year average. If we do get that expected earnings growth, then maybe some of that premium valuation won't look quite as bad, but you might get better returns looking for stocks and sectors that already aren't quite at fully valued. Digging into this chart, we see tech stocks continue to be the most expensive, trading at a price to earnings of 26.1 times. That is 32% more expensive than the long-term average. Most of the other sectors trading at a premium valuations are more modest here, around 7% higher than their averages, so not overly expensive. We do see that some attractive discounts in consumer staples, utilities, and energy stocks, though. The staples and utilities companies have been hit hard this year as investors really sold out to reap those safer yields in money market funds. But lower interest rates in 2024 could bring that money back, bring those investors back into these, these relatively safe dividend stocks. Now, expected sector returns by analysts are interesting then because we see some of those less expensive sectors come back, but also some of the pricey sectors do well. Analysts expect energy stocks to outperform with 20% return versus an 8% return market-wide. Now, with the price of oil touching $70 a barrel recently, a lot of these energy stocks have sold off. If we do get anything like that Goldilocks, no recession and lower rates next year, then price of oil will trade closer to $85 a barrel and maybe even higher. Oil stocks could produce those kinds of returns. Consumer staples and healthcare are also expected to beat the overall market returns in a rebound from, from this year, along with the continued returns in the communication services stocks. But what surprises me most is analysts don't expect real estate or utilities to do well in 2024. Now, these two sectors have been the hardest hit by those rising interest rates, and I think investors and these analysts are going to be surprised at how well these stocks in these two sectors do when rates do come back down. And narrowing this down into individual stocks, you always want to take those analyst buy recommendations with a fistful of salt. Now, stocks are almost always given buy or hold recommendations because analysts don't want to peeve off the companies that might be doing investment banking business with their bank. In fact, over the last five years, 54.4% of stocks in the S&P 500 have had a buy rating at any given time, while, while only 6.1% have been rated sell. Now, this is from FactSet's survey of more than 11,000 ratings on stocks. More than the percentages, though, you can look to these sector ratings and the overall picture to see how bullish analysts are and in what groups. So right now, 54.9% of the stocks in the S&P 500 have that average buy rating, while 39.7% have a hold rating, and only 5.3% are rated sell on average. So that is slightly more positive versus that long-run average, showing us again that analysts are bullish on stocks this year. Now, within these sectors, we see the largest preponderance of buy ratings in energy, communication services, and healthcare. That mirrors the upside target percentages for the stocks, with analysts seeing the most upside in these sectors. Similarly, analysts have put more companies on hold or sell ratings in financials, industrials, and consumer staples sectors. Now, if you ever want to get an update on a sector or see the stocks in a sector so you can get some ideas of which stocks to buy in that sector, go here to the sectorspiders.com, the sector tracker, great free resource on the tool. We use this every week, but you go down here, you see the stock sectors over different time periods, five days, three months, one year, five years, and you can click through to any of these and get a, a list of all the stocks in the S&P 500 in that sector. So within consumer discretionary holdings, we have things like Expedia, Etsy, we have Etsy. 
eBay here. We have the cruise lines like Royal Caribbean. We have uh, Bath and Body Works. We have Ralph Lauren. So a lot of those retailers. We have the ga gaming companies, MGN res Resorts, and et cetera like that. And digging down into those stocks, we can mine some of the highest and lowest expected return stocks for ideas on where to invest for 2024. Now, this data is from December 8th analyst target prices, so a couple of weeks old, but still shows where analysts are expecting the best and worst returns in S&P 500 stocks. Casinos are expected to do very well with three stocks, Wynn Resort, Las Vegas Sands and Caesars Entertainment, all expected to be in the top 10 for returns. Energy stocks also look to have their winners, with Schlumberger, Halliburton, and APA Corporation all appearing with expected returns of 42% or higher. Now, there is less rhyme to the stocks analysts see falling next year, and what you often see here is just a lot of stocks that have zoomed higher well past those average analyst price targets. For example, here, shares of Carnival Corporation, ticker CCL, are up 103% this year, and Crown Castle, CCI, which I highlighted as a strong buy in October, is up 21% in less than two months. There are other stocks, though, that I think could surprise higher. Whirlpool, ticker WHR here, is a dividend king with more than 50 years of increasing payouts and is a very attractive on a valuation basis. I want to highlight some of the stocks I'm watching this week and for 2024. FMC Corporation, ticker FMC, is the worst performing stock in the S&P 500 index this year. It's down 49.7% as the market turns against those agricultural services and chemicals companies. Now, FMC is expected to return to sales growth and profit growth next year, and the valuation looks very attractive on that long-term demand picture for agricultural fertilizers and chemicals. In phase energy ticker ENPH, we talked about this just last Friday and the stocks that I'm buying for 2024 nearly took the top spot for worst stock with a 49.4% loss year to date. This is also a matter of that market turning against an entire group of stocks with solar stocks taking an interest rate related plunge this year. Now, while revenue and earnings are expected lower again next year, stock is approaching a rare valuation opportunity. Enphase is still strongly cash flow positive and leads its industry. I think this company is likely to benefit from this industry weakness as the peers really start dropping out, start bankrupting even, and lower rates in 2024 should support this stock. On the other hand, the market's favorite here, NVIDIA Corporation, ticker NVDA, was the best performing stock in the index, posting a 234% return to this last week. The company is the undeniable leader in the semiconductors capable of running those AI programs, but many are starting to question the stock's growth and valuation. In fact, UBS came out with a rare recommendation to short the stock into 2024. Revenue is expected higher by 56% to $92 billion next year, but investors need to start asking themselves, you know, is that overall semiconductor demand large enough to, to support that kind of growth? $92 billion in sales for one company, plus all the competition that's coming for it fast. Now, looking again at that bigger picture with the sector tracker here, we do see that seven of the 11 stock sectors closed higher last week. And what I wanted to point Point out two very important stocks and sectors actually underperformed, sold off last week that could be a warning on the economy. Both FedEx and Nike fell more than 11% when the companies reported their weaker than expected earnings and outlooks for next year, really dragging the industrials, which was FedEx, and the consumer discretionary sector, so Nike, dragging both those sectors down with them. Both of these companies are important measures of that consumer spending and the economy, so Pessimism on their outlook could be a bad sign for the bull market as we head into fourth quarter earnings that are going to be starting in mid-January. Don't forget to get your free customized investing plan with the link below and make sure your stocks are right for you. Or click on the video to the right for the five safest monthly dividend stocks for cash flow every single month. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.